Welcome back to Breakfast Daily on City TV. And if you'd like to join our discussions, you can do so very easily. You can send a message on WhatsApp. The number is 0204-447-033. You can also hashtag Breakfast Daily on any social media platform so we can pick up your messages. And we're getting into a conversation on buildings, uncompleted ones. Now, Quickly David, some time yeah. back, um, an acquaintance came here to Ghana from South mm. Africa. Okay. And um, the first time he came, you know, he came, did some business here, left. Came back about a year later. Mm. And one of the first things he said when he came back was, you know, when I arrived in Accra, and, you know, on the ride to where he was going in yeah. Accra, he said, he looked around, and he said, I saw some of the same buildings yeah. that were not completed last year. Yeah. And they're still in the same yeah. uncompleted state. Yeah. And so he asked me, he said, in Ghana, do you build without having all the money? Or do you build without... No because he yeah, said, yeah. for him, it was so strange yeah, that you yeah, would even yeah, start yeah. a building project yeah. Yeah. without, like, being able to complete or without knowing, you know, you've got all the yeah, money. You know, like, it. So he was, he was curious about mm. why we would have mm. uncompleted buildings mm. in the same state as they were a year ago, yeah. just sitting there, yeah. you know. And it, it just brings to mind some of the projects that we've been promised or we've yeah. been told uh, are yeah. supposed to be completed or going to be completed, yeah. going to transform the country, going to bring so much business and, and revenue to the state. I mean, we can talk about them. We look at the Marine Drive project. That's one big one yeah. that's supposed to be coming up. There are many questions being raised about that. Obviously, the National Cathedral as well is another big one. Yeah. And for many of these projects, existing structures were demolished yeah. to make way for them. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I, have a, I have a huge problem with the way we go gung-ho yeah. and demolish. Yeah. It's almost like we're just, we're just excited to show that we, are, we, we have a great idea. Join us now. So you don't even have the money yet yeah. to do the project, yeah. right? There's that. Then there's the issue of you know, people eating away at the funds that are earmarked for projects, right? Mm -hmm. Eating away at the funds so that at the time when it's, it's time to put the money into the ground, the money's not enough, hmm. you know? So all kinds of shenanigans going on with the way we, we, we do our things in the country. And you know that every project that is delayed becomes more expensive. Of course, especially in current times with yeah. the city depreciation yeah. and, and all of that. And yeah. it, so it's, it's really a big issue. We can talk about the trade fair yeah. um, redevelopment. Again, demolish, nothing happening. Um, the La General Hospital, yeah. where is it? It was promised. Um, so many more, right? But Right now, I think we'll, took, we'll take a look at a report by our colleague, uh, Ni Ayikwe Okai. Mm. Um, he did a bit of work just following up on some of these uncompleted projects. So let's take a, take a look at what he discovered, and then we'll come back and talk more. Ghana has envisioned huge projects that will make them a sight to see upon their successful completion. The projects are part of efforts to redefine architecture and encourage industrialization. However... As it is often the case with government's own projects, a lot of these facilities are yet to show up. One of such developments is the Marine Drive project. It is a 241-acre waterfront redevelopment plan for Accra that extends from the Independence Square to the coast and culminates in a coastal overlook with expansive, dramatic scenery across the Gulf of Guinea. The project will transform this waterfront into a new public infrastructure with commercial, exhibition centers, offices, a beach soccer field, and recreational and retail facilities. But, after sort cutting in 2018 by President Ekufuado, the $1.2 billion facility is yet to start, despite the demolition of hundreds of structures along the beaches behind the Black Star Square. Some of these structures served as offices for various ministries, departments, and agencies. A portion of the site has currently been turned into a dumping ground with heaps of sand on other sections. The area is serving as an abode for some, while others have resorted to open defecation 
on the heap of sands. Private, more for solid. Every work of private, I call Kutia, fifty pesos, one see, uncle, and Yan Guo, Edia, Soli, and Machi, and a pie, if we are private in your corn. Then say, you're fine. I bind here, I am Yan Bugu, I say, Bible project, my family go, I say, the Soli, I'm very private to also, not in bed, the poor, so there be. The Auditor General's report for the period ended 31st December 2020 sadly states that an amount of 387 million Ghana cities meant for the Marine Drive project was misapplied, leaving the project at its current state. The Ghana Trade Fair Company also signed a $1 billion agreement with Stella Holden to redevelop the trade fair site. This project aims to transform the 140-acre site of the Ghana International Trade Fair Center into a new cutting-edge, mixed-use, sustainable commercial estate. Phase 1 of the project will accommodate the World Economic Forum's Convention Center and Exhibition Halls. Phase 2 of the Ghana International Trade Fair Center redevelopment project will contain amenities including five-star hotels, upscale shopping centers and other residential and commercial buildings. But work on the facility is also yet to commence after the routine demolition of structures which were inhabited by businesses in 2020. The site has the ruins of the demolished structures on some sections with heavy-duty machines around. The La Polyclinic was also demolished in March 2020 for redevelopment due to the dilapidated nature of the structures. Almost three years on, work is yet to commence on the site, despite several assurances from the government. What may look different this time round may be the newly heaped sands on site during a visit to the area. The people of La are calling for their equal share, their fair share as citizens of Ghana for a health facility. Now when we are sick, we, we run around, we do not know where to go. They have given us a polyclinic which closes at 8 p.m. They do not, we don't have a mortuary, we don't have a nico center where uh, people born, premature borns are put there. We do not have anything. The project is being financed by a credit facility from the Standard Chartered Bank of the United Kingdom with an export credit guarantee from Sinusure of the People's Republic of China to the tune of 68 million euros. Upon completion, it will be transformed into a 160-bed facility and will be fitted with an outpatient department, inpatient wards, maternity and neonatal services, surgical units and four theatres, accident and emergency department, public health department, pharmacy unit, laboratory, administration, imaging area with CT scan, x-ray room, ultrasound, fluoroscopy, mammography unit, physiotherapy unit, and a mortuary. The hospital would serve residents of La, Osu, Teshi, Nungua, and its surrounding areas with their health care needs. Similarly, the National Cathedral Project was proposed by the government in 2017 as a fiscal embodiment of national unity, harmony, and spirituality. The $350 million interdenominational cathedral will have an auditorium capable of seating 5,000 people as well as chapels and a baptistry. About 50 buildings in the Ridge Enclave made up of offices and residential apartments for state officials were pulled down as usual. Court of Appeal judges in apartments constructed by the Judicial Service five years ago were evicted and the facility pulled down. A temporary accommodation offered them was said to have cost the country $168,000 for 18 months. Oh, we are suspending all capital projects in 2023 including school buildings, including roofs, including this capital project we are suspending. Meanwhile, we are allocating 80 million for cathedral. You see the opposite here. We are in, where, we, how do we call this place? That's Osulabadi. Around this vicinity, Osulabadi here, you have demolished about 30 houses here in the name of construction of cathedral. You've not been able to even lay a foundation. In this same budget, the minister says he's demolishing this Accra International Conference Center. Just opposite here. 
as I speak to you, they are holding program in Accra National Conference Center. He said he's going to demolish it. And in the budget, the minister who says he's suspending capital projects has allocated 1.4 billion Ghana cities to 1.4 billion Ghana cities just to demolish the Accra International Conference Center and reconstruct it. Within this same vicinity, the same minister, Osula Badi here, has demolished La General Hospital. There is no foundation. Why is it that you are interested in demolishing without reconstruction? Many have criticized the government for the stalling project since March 2022, despite the allocation of over 300 million Ghana cities for the edifice. A country like Ghana, struggling to survive, we choose a model which is the most costly, a very reckless model. Instead of looking for a green field and unencumbered land, we opted to demolish structures, scholarship secretariat, a building that I would never touch, having worked in education before, the scholarship secretariat. If you look at the people who have obtained scholarships and have gone through that place, from the likes of Kwame Nkrumah, Kofi Annan, John Evans and Tabels, the Fulbright scholarship he received. Elsewhere, that property will be preserved. Even to paint, to change the lock, you will need approval. In other jurisdictions, they are the listed properties category. It's, it's a tourist attraction. It makes a lot of revenue for those countries. We demolish all of that. Demolished the Judicial Training Institute. Now the Chief Justice is going around looking for a $50 million loan to build a new one. Judges' bungalows were demolished. Then the Comsys IT firm, Waterstone Realty, the private developer who has luxury apartments. Now he is in court demanding 120 million cities in judgment debt. The Malian Ambassador's residence was demolished. Now they are looking for land for them at airport residential and we have to build a new residence. So do People say that the cost is $400 million. When you put, by the time you put all of this together, we'll be spending in excess of a billion dollars. So the most reckless model was adopted. It appears the ritual of demolition for the start of unfinished projects is not ending anytime soon because plans are in place to have the Accra International Conference Center demolished for the reconstruction of a new one. Many, many people, many countries want to come here for international conferences. We don't have a fit for purpose uh, conference center. In any case, this is a, a, a revenue uh, a, a generator, really. And um, we will work with, uh, continue to work with Parliament. So that report was filed by our colleague Miaikwe Okain. The question why do we demolish existing structures if we're not ready? to immediately commence building the new ones. And where is the money for these projects? <laughs> where is the money? <laughs> okay, I ask anyway. myself, when we see that we don't have a fit for purpose in, uh, building, yes. and that many people are coming to Ghana for conferences, the conferences are still going <laughs> on. We don't have a fit for purpose in, in building, but we are still doing conferences. We just had the <laughs> Africa Prosperity Network. Didn't we have it? We did. Pe -pe -pe, without a new conference center. <laughs> So, so I, I, I'm You're not struggling. sure where that's going. Anyway, well, let's say a very good morning to the host <laughs> of Footprints on City TV, Samuel Atamensa, who's joining us today. Good morning, Samuel. Morning, Kokui. Morning. morning. Good morning. Yeah. How are you, you doing? <laughs> very well, thank you. How are you? Fantastic. We're good. We're, We're good. well. Yeah. We're well, thank you. It's good you. to have you here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I think most of the structures we saw are in Accra. Yeah. So, I mean, we have to stay there and... um. Uh, Summons, can I go there to say that at least for a short period of time, you were in charge of an entity that was overseeing the redevelopment of some areas of Accra, the Marine Drive, the Coastal Development Authority, etc. That, that's correct. That, that's correct. So yeah. you probably have a, you know, some good insight into what the plans looked like. Mm. Um, and I'm not sure if you can tell us what the delay is and what the plan was going forward. No, I mean, uh, Marine Drive was, it had never been under coastal development. So okay. Oh, okay. it's not something that um, ah. I will be privy to. Mm. So, yeah. But hmm. in general terms, okay. you know, we, we are looking at <laughs> the, the hub and spoke the, the machine work thing that we are supposed to transport into government mm. that define the problem 
look for resources, and resources I mean material resources and human resources mm. that will fit mm. into the problem yeah. to wheel it into success. Mm. I think that's where the disconnect is. That one, and I actually listed some of the reasons why I think we are seeing what we are seeing. Mm. If you permit me, I'll go yes. through mm -hmm. some of them. Mm -hmm. Is that please, okay? Oh, please, please. You know, I look at it as, okay, I heard this thing about we need another conference center. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. Mm. But at the time when the pink lady was built, yeah. and I know, I hope you know what the pink yes. lady yes. is, <laughs> yes. uh, the Accra International Conference Center. Yes. Um, and and I, am, I know into detail mm -hmm. uh, because it was built by Enego Project, okay. which, which had come from the one of the Balkan uh, countries, countries yeah. you know. In fact, it was while they were building it that the Balkan War started. Oh. And so a lot of the contractors did not even go back to their, could not even go back to their mm. country. Mm. So they finished this project hmm. and it's what we had. Okay. Now, if we could do a proper evaluation and see whether it's a project that has brought financial benefits mm -hmm. to us as a country, I think that would be the first step I am not so sure whether we have made profit properly so-called. Mm. But at the time when it was built, it was necessary because we needed to host the NAM conference yes. urgently. Yeah. And government needed something. Mm -hmm. We did it. And we didn't have too many private persons involved in that high-level real estate development. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to 2023, we have scores of them. Yes. Yes good numbers mm -hmm. and so i'm thinking does the government necessarily have to build mm -hmm. another conference center mm -hmm. and you know what the answer is mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. no in uppercase <laughs> <laughs> is a complete waste of money yeah. yes it's so unnecessary yeah. that a government mm -hmm. builds a national conference center and manage it no yeah. is yeah. a no no yeah the government must facilitate private sector mm. into these areas yeah. spread across the regions yeah. and so that the government can now make use of mm. it. Mm. That way, government doesn't owe anybody monthly salary. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I don't even see the point in we have to build another one, we mm. have to build another one. Mm -hmm. No, you don't have to build another one. Yeah. What about putting money into upgrading the existing one and then maybe uh, you know outsourcing its management to a private entity that's that's a, another way of looking at it okay but Cause even because it's, it's there and you know, it doesn't yeah, that's some... another way of looking at it but i would even look at inviting a certain participation mm. that would if you like um relegate the responsibility of managing the property to to a private company mm. because government in government out we have proven that this is not a forte we can't do that yeah so this is it any time and every time the conference center needs any help they have to go through a long bureaucracy of looking for money mm -hmm. which money they will never get all anyway mm. and so they have to do this makeshift approach to solving their problems Okay. okay. Now we as a country, now looking at the, 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 the pictures as shown, clearly any teacher of project management should have a case with Ghana. <laughs> any lecturer, anybody teaching in a university, yeah. and I taught project management before, mm -hmm. how be you know in a short mm -hmm. time. But if you look at this, you see that this is project management gone bonkers. Mm. <laughs> okay. I mean, how and do you get into I, project? I, I, I like the I like yeah. the expression. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's consistently mm. bad. And it's on our timeline, right before our eyes, mm. straight away. Mm. I'll show you. So, first reason why some of these things fail, which is known to us, poor planning. Yeah. Yeah. We either don't plan at all, mm. or we plan with the wrong assumptions. Mm, true. I mean, for instance, um, uh, cathedral. Yes. Whose idea was that to go and put it at that place? Yeah. 
So they planned, and the plant told them that situate it at, uh, what do you call it, the ridge? Yes, yes. with already existing. Where the stadium is next door. Mm. Yep. Where there's a cemetery next door. Yeah. Where there's parliament next, next door. door. Mm. Yeah. Where the interconnectedness of the streets and roads there are limited. Mm. And there's a hospital across the street. And you want to put this high capacity building there. Mm. How do we manage traffic? Mm. Well, we already have an example mm. at National Theatre. When there's I a mean, big event, so whose planning was that? Yeah. So that's the first point. Poor planning. Poor planning. Mm. The second one, inconsistent definition of resources. Hmm. What does it take? Mm. Having to head that politicians keep coming. Mm. When we started, it mm. was going to cost 10,000. Mm. And then before we saw, <laughs> the thing has jumped to because we noticed that we needed to add so and so and yeah. so and so. Yeah. So inconsistently, we are failing to plan our resource requirements. I don't get it. Hmm. But, okay, but Simmons, in an instance like the La Poly Clinic, we are told it's going to be financed through a facility from Stancha UK and a Sinoshore facility as well. So how, for a project like that, where the, the funding, whether it's a loan, whether it's supposed to be already in place, how does it still not 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 even a, 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 yeah, but the funding, anytime you access funding, they also come with their own requirements. Maybe we still have not satisfied the requirements. Mm. Just maybe. <laughs> and okay. that leads me to the next problem. Unclear objectives. Mm. Okay. The objectives are so unclear. Yeah. Again, National Cathedral, first they said it's a... Uh, Bible Museum. Mm. <laughs> Second, I heard one of the pastors saying that they'll go and take fruit from, from Jerusalem from, and come yeah, and, come plant, and plant, plant there it, yeah. and then do restaurants yeah, next yes, door so that people will go and eat, eat there. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. It's, all, <laughs> it's, all, it's all part of... I mean, some of these people, they watch Cantata too much. They, they watch concerts too much. I'm telling you. If you, were, if you, you own a church, yeah. and I can use that, you own a church, and you believe so much in fruit from Jerusalem. Yeah. But guess what? You haven't planted fruit from in, Jerusalem in, in your, your backyard. Your back, yeah, your church. <laughs> when it came to the use of the taxpayers' money, look at the idea. Let me not use any, any look at what you are telling us. That we're going to take the, the, the we'll go and take the fruit, the, the, the cocoa yam from Jerusalem and come and plant here and then, and then they will add a, a restaurant and then a restaurant you eat. I said, is this guy real? So I'm saying that when we don't have clear <laughs> objectives, this is what happens. And it's, all these points I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm outlining show up in all these stalled projects. Yeah. Mm. And I'm using the word stalled for just uh, uh, courtesy's sake. Yeah. But in reality, these are failed projects. Mm. Mm. And this, like I said, anybody or a student of project management, this should be a good case for you. Mm. The fourth one, lack of detailed control. Hmm. There's no control. The control oh. is skewed to favor certain people. Or the control, some people are exempted from adherence to the control measures. Mm. Mm. So at the end of the day, accountability is always yeah. questioned. Yeah. You, you get me? Yeah. So that's the one. Now my fifth one, Again, which we all know, lack of transparency. <laughs> lack of transparency, such that even journalists cannot question. Mm. Because mm. we are supposed to take it as, as is. it is. Yeah. You can't say that. Mm. This is 2023, for God's sake. Mm -hmm. Once there's the word public attached to it, journalists and citizens will Must. be interested. Yes. Definitely. Why? because you are doing it for and on behalf of the citizenry. Yeah. Mm. And so cont control, yes, transparency is another. My sixth reason is lack of communication. And mm. I'm talking about proper communication. Mm. Okay. If you have set objectives that are useful to the community, there's value being passed on to the community, mm -hmm. why can't you communicate same? Yeah. Because Politicians always find a way of committing suicide in their missions. A lot of the things you see, say, but didn't they know this? Yeah, you ask. Ah, 
honestly. Yeah, but if you've built before yeah. yourself from your own pocket mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. you know that this one, you shouldn't have done it. Yes. Yeah. Now, I think there are a lot of things uh, shrouded, maybe also deliberately. I, I'm not mm -hmm. even thinking it's deliberate because, see, if it's deliberate, mm. then people will be more crafty in putting it out there. Okay. I think mm. to a large extent, at times, it's cluelessness. Okay. Okay. The wrong people <laughs> put in certain places. Yeah. Wow. And the wrong people put in certain places. Wow. Look, bro, let's go back one after the other and check all these thought projects. Mm. Mm -hmm. Drill it down to the nitty and see who is really managing, whether they are really qualified. Maybe that's the question mm. because the impression we get, I mean, you, you get beautiful elaborate plans like what we've been seeing here yeah. for the the Ghana trade fair mm. which looks so elaborate we, we hear of globally renowned architectural yeah. firms who drew these things yeah. up who have been awarded the contracts yeah. to actually build yeah. them so you ask yourself if you've got people of that this caliber, caliber yeah who are supposed to be in charge of the yeah. projects how come we're seeing what we're seeing so maybe yeah. that's what you're but saying there's always that a role the role play in ah, charge well in charge okay so for instance who is the architect mm -hmm. for the National Cathedral? David Ajay is the principal yeah. yes. architect. Yes. So is he the project supervisor? No. 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 Is he the quantities person? No. no. So, so everybody has a role. Yeah. But there's a certain critical role that leverages on the success or otherwise of the project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that that one alone can mess everything up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you talking, get me? Yeah. Talking about qualified people, mm -hmm. um, Samantha, I want us to talk to engineer Mahama. Okay, he's, okay. he's gone off the line now. So we, 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 we'll, we'll continue. Yeah, my other point is change in direction mm -hmm. and change in scope. Mm -hmm. Unplanned change in direction. Mm -hmm. You heard National Cathedral that yeah. finally they, they, then the, the project cost went up because they, deci they decided to add, <laughs> add a, a restaurant museum, and a, a Bible, Bible museum. museum. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? And it happens. A yeah. lot of them. Yeah. Midstream, we change direction without yeah. counting the cost. The, and I'm talking about physical cost. Yeah. Physical cost mm. and the social cost. The social cost that is captured in the delay mm. Mm. because... If it is worth what the reason for which it's being built, then it must serve a purpose. Mm -hmm. And if that purpose is not as urgent, why do you even start? So, yeah. Now, if can if you can afford to wait for another ten years, why not wait? Then we are why not being wait? smart. Yeah. And why not build in phases? So if okay, if indeed they say maybe we've expanded the scope, so why not? Starts with the initial yeah, plan, then the maybe one. along the way when it generates is done. Yeah, that's yeah. why there's project management. That's how there's project. Mm -hmm. So modular in nature. So phase one mm -hmm. up to this time because this this is what, what we, we have. have. Mm. Phase two can move. You know, that's it. Yeah, and this is where we find ourselves. Unrealistic expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Unrealistic <laughs> expectations. Like, yeah, this is it. Uh, we create, we create major castles yeah. <laughs> in the sky. In the skies, mm. and we, we, in our minds, we are thinking we are solving the world's largest problems. Mm. Meanwhile, we don't have what it, it takes. Reminds you of the sky train. Another joker just came up. Another joker came, and then they spend some money yeah. going up and down, yeah. and people are still walking free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, so the joke is too much. Maybe yeah. we watch or something does it for too long. Oh. No. <laughs> I think we did. I think we did. The joke, the joke is too much. I'm telling you, this yeah. country. No. Hmm. And look, another one. Lack of monitoring. Hmm. Lack of monitoring. A whole monitoring and evaluation ministry, ministry. there was. Lack of monitoring. <sighs> Unrealistic timelines. I mean, look, I can go on and oh, no, on no. and on and on. Poorly assigned roles. We talked about that already. You, you understand? Yeah. So if you take each of these projects, you will see, I've, I've outlined 11, Points. you know, reasons. Yeah. You will see at least four or five of them in all, in of, all of these. Yeah. Okay. 
qualified people. I'm yeah. telling you. You don't have the money. You say you are embarking on the thing. <laughs> yeah. How? You don't have the money is one. Two, you don't even know where to get the money. Yeah. But for political expediency you, you, and you, sweet tongue, you, you, you go and promise people it. something yeah. that you can't deliver. At the end of the day, you inflict wounds mm -hmm. on the poor citizens. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dash their, their hopes, hopes yeah. in political governance. And then it becomes, as a, you know, a, a wicked cycle. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, people, people now don't know what to make of governments yeah. anymore. No. Yeah. Because they say one thing and do another. Mm. You understand? Yeah. And a lot of the times, <clears throat> governments believe that um, the media should understand. It's like a member of parliament who comes to say that my, my role is to make, and, uh, make laws, not mm. to bring development. And then you go and promise development. When you are <laughs> jumping from <laughs> village to village, promising them water <laughs> and everything, did yeah. you, did, have did you, you not see? read that your, yours is to make laws? <laughs> mm. yeah. you, you understand? Yes. So this is where they we set find ourselves. Up. Hmm. Okay. Well, we've been joined by um, someone who is very oh. experienced and competent in doing his work. Um, engineer Abdullah Mahama. Good morning, engineer. Hello, engineer. Yeah, good morning, David. Uh, yes, uh, welcome to Breakfast Daily. I'm fine, I'm fine. All right, your voice is a bit low, if you can raise it a little bit for us to hear you. I can hardly hear you. Um, so, what, what, I know you particularly have a challenge with a lot of these projects um, <laughs> that have you know, s stalled. Many of them have not actually even started since the, the sword was cut and um, lands have been cleared for buildings to start, for projects to begin, but nothing has happened. Um, what, from where you stand, is the reason um, for many of these things that we see? Well, I'll say a good morning to your cherry viewers, yourself, uh, Koki and Samen. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you to Samen. Samen, if you remember, about five years or four years ago, I, I was at CTFM and the one I just got now met and I told you I'm getting frustrated. <laughs> and I want to stop. And I want to stop what I'm doing. And he said, even though you are talking cramp on and do it, people are, some of them are listening. But if you stop here, they said it's quite. It's quite. So it. I think that day, it, was, it kept ringing in my ears throughout the whole day. And I said, well, yeah. about three doctors who have told me not to stop what I'm doing. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, it will be So I just say thank you very much for that, uh, that uh, <laughs> uh, green light. <laughs> to easy. keep on struggling on. But this morning, you really made me start. Um, I am a student of uh, engineering as well as uh, engineering project management. Mm -hmm. So you, you rightly put it that uh, we should be so sad. We should have something to tell government about really what is happening within the country. One of the most dangerous in terms of cost, installment or abrogation of all these contracts is the actual realization of the monies that have been invested and what we're supposed to get or the outcome. So if you have a project which is supposed to be completed in about two years, so that the taxpayer will not have some relief because that thing would have ended up in the finished product where Ghana will start to uh, realize funding or money. And so if you have 10 projects, and in all the 10 projects, you are expected to have about maybe a billion dollars in terms of usage in the next year. And because all of them have been stored at a certain stage, they are not usable. You can't use them. So it means you have sunk the money down the drain in all the projects, and you have not realized anything at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So no wonder we are hitting about 530 something billion, and there's nothing to show. This is not politics. If you talk about the La General Hospital in particular, and if you look at the number of patients that that facility was actually attending to, I get a bit worried when I try to be at the, op at the opposing side because of my records with government, successive government. If you play the, back the tapes of what I said about the Latino hospital, you'd be amazed that I think I mean the outcome. 
you cannot demolish a structure, essential service structure, and you have no plans for the construction. I engaged the minister for health, I think, on one of the first pages. When he was trying to justify some redesign because we are closer to the sea, the, the, the uh, corrosion and whatever, at the end of the day, we are still where we are. Because my mother used to attest the because she was staying at La. She has moved to Kaswana. Mm. And so I, I feel directly affected with, this, with the demolition of the structure yet to start. Don't go back. I, I engaged David about two months ago about the Sagami project. And I didn't even refer to the Sagami. I said, go to the Kufobia Road and see what the President Kufo started with the affordable housing. Now, those buildings are strategically located closer to government entities. Look at the All Nation University, who needs a lot of accommodation for the students. Ironically, the affordable housing is at about 500 meters. It's about two minutes walk from the All Nation University on the Suhum Kofobia stretch. Ghana Water Company, ECG Regional Office, GASEM, DVLA are just about a kilometer and a half from the facility. Yet over 80% of the people who are working there commute from Accra, Medina, to Kupodria on a daily basis because they, have, they don't have accommodation within those areas. Yet the, the building has been framed, concrete has been casted, iron rods have been exposed for the past 13 to 15 years, corroded, and the building are sitting there. We we'll jump those ones and we'll go and start new ones. So you can ask yourself, if government went for loan for the affordable house so that at least it can take off just about two entities, ECG and Ghana Water Company staff within the Kofobia enclave. From 2008, 2009, that the SWA Kofobia Executive Office, those buildings are standing there. Now, when you look at the, the cathedral, I valued the cost of the land at the time that it was allowed to be demolished. Those buildings that were demolished, the land was about 350 million United States dollars. Mm. Have you forgotten what the, S, the former Minister of uh, Western Housing told us about the NEMA? To demolish all the structures in NEMA, to make it a business, I, I, I do, what do you call it? There was a name for it. Like I, one of the best estates ever yeah. to be received in Accra. Yeah. And I put that same evening on Eyewitness News. That it cannot be. Because I didn't see how government was magically going to relocate all those over 40,000 plus people at NEMA. So I did, that just buttresses what Simon was saying that wild imagination, we dream so unrealistic imagination. Mm. That you want to take the people of Madi and NEMA, Mamobi, part of uh, Kanda, Big and then yeah. put them where? and start the 3,000 or whatever plus building because you have an estate developer, an investor who is coming in to construct 10-story houses so that at least the owners of the land can be given maybe the ground floor so that the other ones will be used for government. So that's the only realistic uh, uh, what you call it, imagination. Mm -hmm. Government should not try to take what I'm seeing on set now, the conference center off. What is, it, what is, the, what is the state of the conference center? Why must it be demolished? And maybe look at the cathedral. Sometimes you have to go back and teach in the class. <laughs> you have to go back and teach because, because you, are dealing with, you are dealing with traffic. There's so much headache around 11 o'clock to like 1.30 yeah, to when go. it's lunch time in those areas. <laughs> the same applies to around 4.30 to like 7 p.m. when people are rushing home. When you go to Cote d'Ivoire, they did a similar one, but they, they want to like, let's say, beyond Coporudia. And they plant a whole community in the virgin forest. Yeah. And now, because they, they went, the government started, they were able to control development within that area. Yeah. If you want to have a quiet time, you leave the outskirts of the town, mm. go and have your quiet time out of Accra, and develop the place. Because now you are the first person who has an edifice in that area. So you have yeah. utmost control. You build development towards that area. I am sad that the first government. There's something that I think is not being turned in the right direction. Mm. Mm. And if, if we don't take care where we are getting to with our debt, and we have invested so much money, but the, the productivity 
or the end result is not being realized because we are not even finishing, let's say, we have about 20 abandoned projects. Let's finish five and start to realize the, 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 the revenue from there so that we can address the other one. We are not doing that. So at the end of the day, I am not a lawyer. Mm -hmm. If we have lawyers who can join with us, some of us, the project managers or the engineers, and we can start to take government on one of that to, on some project that we think that they are long over. Because, you see, the private man, I have just finished a project for an in individual who has I've just finished a two-bedroom trip containing 12 apartments. It was about $1.3, $1.4 million. Mm -hmm. Just the delay because of the, the fall of the city last year, around April to like August, uh, September, we lost almost 37% of the cost of the project in the same year. Mm. So we have to look for over, over $200,000 mm. to add to the actual cost because of some stoppage of the work for like four months. So can you imagine government abandoning project for four years, five years, six years, and in Kufo's, in Kufo's own over 10 to 13, 14 years? How do you go back and start the affordable housing which have been left in the, at the measure of the weather, rain, sunshine, and corrosion? I'm telling you, if you go and do the structural integrity of those buildings as we speak, some of them, some of them may have to be demolished. And that's mm -hmm. why some people just want to go and make their money. But Angela it's Mahama, so you, you, okay, you have worked on public sector projects and private projects, right? And I can imagine a lot of the project managers you've worked with are probably the same people, whether on the private side or public side, who have sat in, whether it's Samenza's classroom or some other <laughs> classroom. <laughs> They're not, you know, they, they should be, we would assume, competent people who could handle a project on either side. So what is it, what do you think is the distinguishing factor between someone handling that private sector project and being able to deliver on time and sticking to timelines and whether it's, as you said, going out to look for more money to complete the project because there's a sense of urgency because of extenuating circumstances. And the person on the public sector side, it could be that same person, but when it comes to the public sector project, all of a sudden they act as though they don't know the principles of project management. Hello? Yeah, is a control. It, out, of, out of the 11 items that Samen spoke about, the control and coordination, like you, you, you stated of this uh, trade fair thing, Ajayi, uh, Akita Ajayi will be the architect in charge of the whole project because he's a lead consultant in this case. There's a controller. That's someone who's actually managing the project. So how, how would it be possible that mm. I will be doing a private entity job and within a secluded period, I am done? Because there's somebody who is coordinating, who is actually doing what we call forecasting, to know the danger that I await you when X, Y, Z are not done within this time. And then selection of the professionals in the field is one of the reasons why we are where we are. Because I'm sure that some of us who would walk off the project because of our integrity will not be called because I will not sit on a project mm. where it becomes so awful mm. that coordination is not properly done, monies are not sent on time, well, in fact, you have actually outlaid all the dangers or the possible challenges that you will be confronted with about the next three months. If X, Y, Z are not done, I will pick my back and leave. So they wouldn't engage people who want to stand on their ground and make it function. So we'll go for the ones who would down to the rooms and cabins of the people. And then that's what we can have. Because, like somebody is saying, how would we have such a project like the Cathedral? And we are now trying to add a the next six months, four months, because we have heard some news item or whatever, they will try to just say, oh, this is being added, that's why the court has gone high. What do you want to do any proper construction like what we are doing at the cathedral or any other one? You don't even start on the instance. After the designs have been properly done, the, the structural engineer comes in to actually do the design of the structures, is now given to the quality surveyor team to actually price every item. And after tightening, they have, they have two other items, all the preliminaries and then contingencies. Mm. So even though the, the project may cost, let's say, 100 million Ghana cities, they add about 15% contingency in case we are confronted with certain problems. So I don't know why almost every time mm. the value of the project still increases. And you see, in project management, if the value of a project goes beyond 20%, it has been really packaged. 
Sometimes I think I'm right on that score. Yep. <laughs> So it's almost like a different project. Mm. It's not the same. It can't be, be the same project. But, but when the value goes um, in excess of 20% consistently over time, mm. then we need to question the ability of governments to embark op on projects. Mm. Okay. Mm. Because mm. it's just a testament that you don't have what it takes mm. to okay. embark on, on projects. projects. Yeah. So let's rewire, let's rethink and look at how mm. we're going to do these things. Mm. Mm. Because that's where we find ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Engineer Mahama, thank you so much for joining us yes. um, this morning yes, on Breakfast welcome. Daily and for your yeah. input as well. Yeah. Thank you. Engineer Abdullah yeah. Mahama um, giving his, his input there. But isn't that the same human beings, Samens? It's the same human beings, though. Maybe find themselves in a different sector, but what, it's the same human beings. Mm -hmm. And perhaps the private sector person is profit driven. He's yeah. like, look, I'm putting this money in here, I've got to make it back plus some. Maybe the public sector you, person doesn't have profit, that. It's not only profit, though. What do you because, mean? No, I mean... Oh, you mean the, you the larger benefit? Driven, yes, because at the end of the day, if you are taking my... I, I guess it still ends up as, as a profit factor. But, I mean, you're looking to cut costs, you're looking to you, save you, you money, see, you're looking we, to... We have subscribed to a structure of politics which I consider suicidal. <laughs> We, as a mm, country, mm. have subscribed to a structure of politics. You see, when political parties win elections, yeah. there's a promise they make to their followers. And this promise is about dishing out of project contracts. Yeah. Okay? Now, if we, in our minds, tell ourselves that project contracts are given out as a reward for supporting for the patronage yeah. mm -hmm. or partisan patronage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why do we wake up in shock mm -hmm. when things are not done in a scientific manner? Mm -hmm. you, you understand? Yeah. I mean, the person believes that I earned this, this on the basis that I supported you yeah. mm -hmm. with my substance or with my resources, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for which reason I'm being recognized and rewarded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where is the science in it? There's hmm. no science. There's no science. There's no science. Y you understand? Yeah. And this thing has been here from the days of Kwame Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. That you scratch my back, I, I scratch, scratch your yours. back. Yeah. And so, yes, and then they go to the finance ministry, then they can look through the papers and say, oh, this contractor, mm -hmm. he's not one of us. Mm -hmm. So let's pay the other one because when you pay him, then my party, you know. And then, you know, these people, will we'll pass through this mail, and then they go on retirement, sit in their rooms, listen to radio, and point fingers at Ghana. Mm -hmm. yeah. They should be very you are embarrassed. The, you are the very, you're very much very a part of, part the, of the, the rotten the, system yeah. that has brought us to this place mm. as a country. Mm. Part of the rotten system. Yeah. When it was their time, they did the same thing. Mm. Now, because they, they are not being called to play, they know everything that is wrong with the system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only that when it was their time to change, they never made any changes. Mm. And that's what we have. Mm. Every project owned and managed by government has suffered this kind of violence. Mm. I mean, with no there, consequence. Yes. If you, I, 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 I don't know all the details, but from where we sit, state institutions, some of them have delivered you know if i like if you know positively mm. Mm. you can talk about uh, uh gepa okay mm. yeah yeah yep. where okay. the lady was uh, dr As Efua Asari. 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 Yeah. i mean Asari. you can Asari. see from where we and i'm mm. saying that i'm not i don't know the okay. details mm. but in the media what we see is that there's been a facelift of yes. this institution mm. yes yes we talk about GIPC. GIPC. Mm. yeah we talk about uh Jiman's place mm. uh, Tourism. Um, the, the tourism yeah. You understand? Mm. We talk about state housing company. Mm. And I say that for state housing company, for the first time since Kutua Champo, for the first time since Kutua Champo, mm. that I have seen and witnessed what that institution has done. Mm. You go to the regions, see the new project, mm. and then when they start, they finish. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Ah. So some people are working, some mm. people too are muddying the waters, chaka, 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 yeah. chaka, chaka.
mm. in the name of party card mm. and nobody can do anything to them mm. and this central control that a uh, project is going on yeah, they have to go and ask somebody somewhere mm -hmm. who is not directly oh, connected Lord. but he's the most powerful mm. person you know these things Killing. they will come back to hurt us like i say you may think that you have power today power doesn't reside at one place mm. Mm. tomorrow you will come out of the place where you are sitting today and become a victim of the wrong decisions yeah, and the skewed good. decisions that you are making today i'm telling you we say, go go and stop Galam. Say, you are playing politics mm. with it. They say, go and do this agriculture. You are playing politics with it. By the time that you are no more in power, you go to town to go and buy Duade. Duade, you know Duade. <laughs> <laughs> because you want to eat Duade Agua. Yeah. <laughs> and you will see that there's no Duade in the system yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is where we find ourselves. Projects stalled, stalled mm. skyrocketing project costs. People mess up and they get away with it. And everything, man. Mm. Remember what Michael Ahniefa said yesterday on effective living, that the person you are today is mm. as a result of decisions you made five, five years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Ah, well, yeah. the country we yeah. are today is but as a result of decisions we made over the decades. As we wrap up, the part that, the part mm. that even shocks me, maybe it shouldn't, but it's how a project goes from 100 million to 400 million because of the insertion of two minor you know inclusions in the project i mean i i, I i'm befuddled it's it's like what are we saying is it that we are pretending that we don't know that somebody is trying to pull a fast one over our eyes no it's just it's just fanciful thinking <laughs> just fanciful thinking people travel and they see something <laughs> or Hey, then we should go and do something. Why you don't have what it takes? Yeah, and so even if you it. did, you are not going to earn returns from it. Co yeah. that will commensurate. Yeah, uh, what is it? Commensurate. Yeah, that will be commensurate, commensurate with, with the, 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 the you know. Yeah. You, you mm. don't. You, you can't do it. Yeah. So cut your coat according, according to, to the size of your cloth. Yeah. You don't just do it because you saw it in a movie. Mm -hmm. You are not James Bond, people. Mm -hmm. You are not James Bond. Yeah. Even James Bond, cries some of the things he yeah. does in the movie, he doesn't believe them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't believe, he believe, just, he doesn't believe, believe yeah. in real life. <laughs> so I don't even know why we do this to ourselves. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And it happens across. I'm yeah. telling you, it happens. Yeah. If, we, if we think that we wake up one day, there's a new government, and suddenly oh. all these things will end, then the new government, they are not Ghanaians. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. Then the new Giant. government, they are not Ghanaians. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, yeah. Uh, and my mind goes to Abidjan mm. and then Yamasukro. Mm. You know, where you see the cathedral that was built there. Mm -hmm. And, that's you know, yeah, but again, you, you can't you, even compare. I hear this all the time. Yeah. You had that thing done by Hofwe Boigny. Boigny, yes. yeah. And was that was no democracy. Completely. Mm. No, see, you see, that was no democracy. No, no, at all. It was him. It was he ruled mm -hmm. a country like a kingdom. Mm. Yes. So yes. we can excuse yes. them for that. Yes. But even that, I was trying to make reference to the fact that he took it completely away from the center of busyness and Abidjan. No, because he took it to his hometown. Anyway, but that's that's true. <laughs> he took it to his Yamusukro man. <laughs> but I'm just saying that yeah. if you do it in a way that you can't create business out, out of, of it, it. Yeah. that's also it. a failure. Yeah. Forget it. Yeah. And look at the sprawling nature mm. of our urban centers. Oh mm. gosh. Accra, Kumasi. Now, if you travel from Kumasi to Obuase, there are no green spaces. Yeah. You'll be driving now. Uh, then you reach. Then before you see a crocari is here, Obuase is here. <laughs> before then, vast green spaces. Mm. Yeah. No. Accra to Kaswa. Mm. No green spaces. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Accra to Dodoa. No, yeah. You, you understand? It's all gone. It's true. So, so you see the, the rate at which we are expanding yes. our urban area. So this means that if you are going to locate anything of that nature, think about the potential of creating businesses around it. Yeah. How many businesses can you create around Ridge again? Yeah. Apart from the business of beggars standing by the roadside Charlie. and harassing people mm. and cleaning your windows Someone. by force because you are going to you are going to you are going to create 
repeated cycles of frustration for yes. motorists yes. because you're going to be locked in traffic. Yes. Saturday morning, can you imagine when there's a ceremony mm -hmm. at the at mm -hmm. the Parliament House. Yes. You can't go anywhere. Parliament. Nobody can come. Now the Cathedral. Parliament House, they've been giving the front, the front for funerals. F yes. So there's a funeral there. There's yes. a program in yeah. at Conference Center. There's something. Conference Center. Rich Accra Rich Church. Is burying, yeah. People are burying their dead next door. Mm -hmm. There's the small estate there yeah. where they bury people. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ozu Cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> the congestion there? Yeah. Already. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you are doing something this, there's something the called yeah. scenario planning. Yeah. Somebody must have built all these scenarios mm. and factored them in. You would think. So I'm just saying that for planning, we, on, on, I mean, on clear objectives, expectations gone wild all over the place. And some total of these things is what has brought us here. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very, you very so much, Samuel Atamensa. Yeah. Post the footprints on City TV. Mm -hmm.